Facebook is dead. It really is. I know Mark Zuckerberg is trying to be the next Steve Jobs. He's got these big presentations about the new things like the timeline. That's going to be happening with Facebook. But really, who cares? Honestly. I don't really want to know about everybody's personal life. All the coffees they drank, all the meals they ate, all the places they went to, what their hair was like in high school, and the place where they got that bad haircut mm -hmm. on a map. Don't really need it. I don't think you guys are really interested in that either. For me, life is good and too short to waste. Now, things I do want to learn about? I like to learn more things about job hunting, about project management, for example. I like to learn more about training. And I like to practice language. I'm trying to improve my French skills right now. And I don't want to spend a lot of time doing this. I like it to be quick. I like it to be fast. Life is busy. And like I said, I don't really want to waste time because life is good. So I'd like to have this learning happen in messages of 140 characters or less. Therefore, I can learn. I can connect with people. I can expand my horizons. And I can challenge my thinking. So, I'm going to show you today why Twitter needs to be part of your daily routine. I'm going to show you how you can make your life Twitterific. <laughs> now, as I said, some of the things I like to learn are some of my passions. And a lot of people say, oh, there's all these celebrities on Twitter, I don't need to listen to what these celebrities say. Well, that might be true. But statistically, I'll just give you a bit of a background. On September 8, 2011, which was five years after Twitter started, they had 100 million active users. That's 230 million tweets per day that are being sent out by these 100 million users, or another way of saying that could be 5 billion tweets per month. It's quite a lot. So I'm going to share with you where I get some of my learning from. First off, I'm a full-time learner right now. I'm eating up information like a carnivore, trying to get as many morsels of information as I can. And so the places I get them from are the ladders, for example. It, it helps me, through their Twitter feed, to learn more about resume writing, interview skills, sending the thank you letter after the interview, staying motivated during the job hunt, which is kind of a pig one, and the elevator pitch which I'm still not very good at, but I've got a lot of tips from this Twitter feed. An example that I just got last week was from the founder. He had a blog post, 10 things your career counselor isn't telling you. And after reading that, I was able to narrow my focus a bit better and figure out a bit more of my strategies on how I could be more hireable or desirable for a company. So it's been very useful for me. Another thing I've seen while doing this MCATD certificate is that project management seems to be intertwined with a lot of the things that we're doing in this course. But I don't really know anything about project management. It's an area I'm really not clear on. And so I try to learn more about that through self-study. And an easy way for me to do that is through Twitter. So one of my favorite Twitter feeds is PM Hut, Project Management Hut. And through this Twitter feed, I've been able to learn more vocabulary, more strategies, about organizational development, team building, etc. that I didn't really know much about before. So just in the past two months, I've learned more about project management than I have in my entire life, basically, and through Twitter. Another thing, of course, that I have a passion for, and that's why I'm in this program, is training. I really like training and all the aspects, e-learning, instructional design, needs assessments, learning styles, all of these things are really fascinating for me. But I think there's a lot to learn, and I'm always constantly getting more information about that, which means I also need more clarity. So through Twitter, I'm getting some feeds, some tweets from people who talk about training. One of my favorites and most consistently useful to me is from Connie Malamud, the e-learning coach. For example, this one, why you need to use storytelling for learning, which we talked about the other day. She recognizes the importance of tools for training. She talks about e-learning and how you should approach that. A lot of really helpful, useful advice. And I find that I have been clipping her articles constantly from my Evernote account so that I can access that when I do get the career I'm looking for right now. 
Another passion I have is language. Through Ryerson University, I, was a, I did a proficiency in French certificate, and I want to practice that language so that I don't forget it. But I don't have a chance to really do that every day. I don't know a lot of French speakers, so I thought, okay, how can I practice French on a daily basis? Well, Twitter, of course. I get, on a daily basis, new vocabulary words, grammar tips, and things from people who are sending out helpful tweets. My favorite being from Quebec, Radio Canada. And I'm amazed at how, in just 140 characters, I can practice my grammar skills, I can practice my vocabulary, and get new French, well, not new, but French practice on a daily basis without any effort on my part, really. And it's free. It comes to me conveniently and easily. So, last but not least, another thing I think is important is laughter. Laughter and humor. I think it's something that we should have in our daily routine. And an easy way to get that for me is through Twitter. Just randomly throughout the day, I have times where I have these little bursts of laughter based on tweets I get. And my favorites are people who are fake characters on Twitter or a parody of someone in real life, like the Queen and Drunk Hulk, a monster with bad grammar and a drinking problem. So an example of that would be the day after the MTV Video Awards, Drunk Hulk tweeted this gem. First meet, then egg. Drunk Hulk disappoint that Lady Gaga no represent different food group last night. I loved it. I retweeted it, made me laugh, right my head. And don't you wish the Queen would always say this? Good gracious, look at the time. It's gin o'clock. Everybody wants the Queen to tell them that they should be taking a drink in the middle of their day. And I totally enjoy getting these. So, how do you follow someone into Twitter, and how do you know if that person's useful? What I do is a very simple approach. I go to Google and I search for best Twitter lists, or I just go to Twitter and go to the Who to Follow section. I put in maybe training, or I put in humor, and I see what comes up. Then I read the, the, the post that that person has tweeted. If the content is good and not too many personal details that I don't really want, I'll follow them for about a week maybe, two weeks. If it's consistently good, I keep following them. If it's not, I unfollow them. And that's how I sort of built up uh, a learning sort of resource for myself. So I have a few questions. Who thinks, for example, that the latter would be useful for their professional life? Raise your hand. Who thinks that they would like to learn more about project management? Raise your hand. Anyone think that uh, humor is an important part of your daily routine or laughter? And anyone interested in learning a new language? Last question, training. Would you think that Connie Malamud's site would be helpful to, you, helpful to learn about e-learning, instructional design, needs assessments? Anyone? Okay, so by raising your hand, you're helping prove the point that Twitter is beneficial to your daily routine. So my last question is, who will you follow today?